Welcome to the UFL. I don't know what you do. Start one of the best leagues in New York. So let me know if you love the sports. Stephen J. Dawn and Ghost are your host of Real Tough Talk. Welcome to the UFL. I don't know what you do. Start one of the best leagues in New York. So let me know if you love the sports. Stephen J. Dawn and Ghost are your host of Real Tough Talk. What's going on, people? Thanks for joining us today. Stephen J., my man Ghost, back with y'all. Real tough talk, back on the scene. Been gone for about two weeks, but we're back, and we're happy to be here. You guys know by now that this, this happens to us like every other year, that we have crazy snowstorms, you know, crazy winter weather. That's what happens in the winter season, and I'm pretty sure we weren't the only league that felt it, but we're back, and we're ready for some football action. Pretty much, we're now preparing ourselves for the playoff run. Right now, this would be technically week nine. And the season's almost over. We got a lot of teams stepping in the forefront of being big-time playoff teams. Everybody in this league make the playoffs, so everything is going to be interesting to see who matches up with who come next week. But this week is real interesting because you get to see a lot of elite teams playing each other and see how they step, how they look playing versus a team that's as competitive as they are. And this is as competitive as it gets. Some of the best teams in the league this year are facing each other for the first time. You know, so it's going to be a back and forth game for a lot of these teams because none of them are willing to give up a loss to a team that they're playing to this week. Well, we're going to jump into the first game we want to talk about, and that's going to be Goon Squad versus Reloaded. Goon Squad coming in 1-6 and six, as Reloaded coming in 4-3. and three. This is going to be an interesting game because you have Shaq, the CEO of Reloaded, Captain... Defensive captain, all that good stuff, facing his former teammate, Cornbread, who was the captain, owner of Goon Squad. And these guys used to be on the same team with KDW a few seasons ago. And the thing about it is, you know, they, you know, had an okay season. But the, the thing about it was when you have two leaders on the same team on different pages, obviously it's not going to work out, and that is why the divide actually um, eventually happened, and now you see Bread running his own team and Shaq having his own team, and they're finally facing each other for the first time. Well, you're going to have Brian, the former UFL offensive player of the year a few seasons ago, who's not going to be able to make this game. Brian had an up-and-down season, I would say. He's not here for personal reasons, and I think that's going to impact this team because they still got Dave, um, the new quarterback still getting used to these guys, and I think with Brian missing reps for the team, it's going to hurt their offense. Well, this will be their only their second time playing with Dave on his team, so they still, still, still trying to get the iron out the kinks and you know get used to each other. And to not have Brian here is a missed opportunity for this team to kind of get Brian and Dave on the same page on the offense. And on Goon Squad, this team went from Pito being the starting quarterback. To crazy, I'm sorry, Pito being the starting quarterback, to Mr. Throwing, to nobody throwing. This game we're going to see Bishop throwing. And the team, the problem with, with Goon Squad, I think they have a lot of good players. Uh, you have Butter playing very well. You have uh, Miguel being a good ball giver. You know, Bishop playing a really well season. He made the All-Star team. This problem with this team is offense. They're one and six, and they scored a combined 34 points a game. That is the lowest in the Eastern Conference, one of the worst offensive attacks in this league. And you got to put it up to quarterback troubles. They, they, they never had a stable quarterback. Pito didn't work out for them. It didn't work out for the style for the, um, of their offense. And, you know, moving forward, they had some stand-ins. They had people try to, you know, make up for Pito's play. Stop, stop. What? These quarterbacks are bad. Vito was a former quarterback of the year, but he had a blocker every single time. And Cornbread didn't figure out that he needs somebody to sit there with Vito because it's not mobile. And then it seems it seems is bad. Listen, they're I mean, bad. They have good players. They have an opportunity to be better. They can grow, but Bread has to listen, go. And I didn't want to be a so, quarterback. I didn't want to be so aggressive on it because you know they're getting punished enough as it is with the bad season they're having. But obviously, it was the quarter at the quarterback. Pito didn't work out for them, like I said. And, you know, they, they have missed a, they, this, in their first game. Stop. It, it didn't work out either. Mister's not a good quarterback. He's a backup quarterback at most. I just I was going to get to that. Though. We're going to jump into the game <laughs> right now, and we'll show you what happened. Like I said, they got a good defense. 
offense is one of the worst I've ever seen. Reloaded goes three and out, gives the ball up to Goon Squad. You're going to, like I said, Bishop gets to start. Bishop's going to get blitzed by Ali and throw a deep pass to a wide open X for a big gain in the first down. Bishop moving the ball. He used to play quarterback years back, and now he's given opportunity to show what he can do. Third down, you're going to have Bishop throw the X in the corner of the end zone, but it's going to be picked off by Shaq, giving the ball back to reloaded, and you see Bishop making his first mistake, Shaq showing his ability to be able to read plays, gets the interception here. I mean, the thing about it is, okay, Bishop can quarterback, but obviously this drive didn't work out, but it hurts more because Bishop was having a good offensive season as a receiver. So now that he has to shift to a quarterback, it's not going to work out in a lot of ways because, you know, obviously he hasn't played in a long time. He, they, they, they're still ironing out whatever problems they have on offense, and right now, you're seeing the problems that they have, even with Bishop quarterback. Dave gets the ball back for this reloaded offense. He's getting the start. Um, we see him go three and out. Dave is facing his pro goon squad team that had an opportunity to pick him up. This is his second drive now. He's going first down. He's going to throw to Eric in the middle for a decent game. Then he's going to throw to Jalen, who's going to run for a nice game in the first down. Dave is moving the ball, barely, um, spreading the field. Then Dave on third down is going to throw to Eric in the middle, but the pass is going to be high. It's going to be picked off by Butter, giving the ball back to goon squad. And I think Butter got snuffed. That guy should be in the all-star game. I don't know what happened. He's been playing well. Just because you don't have a lot of interceptions, that doesn't mean you haven't played well. He gets interception here on Dave. Great play by Well, like, like we've been saying on the field, um, the, the, the rosters are not set right now. So right. these play these these last couple games means a lot. So he can play the way he's playing. If he's consistent enough, maybe he'll be on that list on their team. You're going to have Bishop getting the ball back now. He's going to throw the X who's going to run across the field for a nice gain in the first down. A few plays later, Bishop on fourth down is going to throw it up. It's going to be incomplete. Turning the ball over on downs, giving it back to reloaded. Dave with the ball again. This time, this is his third possession. On second down, he's going to throw short to Chad for a few yards. Getting Chad, the former All-Star, involved in the play is a smart idea. Dave then going to throw to Ali, who's going to have a nice block from Eric. Ali's going to run for the first down. Dave is going to go deep to Jalen. It's going to be a bad pass and picked off by X, giving the ball back to um, Goon Squad. And this is Dave, sometimes inconsistent. I don't think he's comfortable with this offense yet, but these are interceptions he can't make. He's too smart to make this happen. And I think the problem with Dave is these guys are not running the routes he wants them to run. And when he has that with his Spartan team or the guys he play with, he breaks on them. But since he's not really comfortable with these guys yet, I think he's holding back, and I think that's why he's struggling. And maybe that's the reason why their offense hasn't warmed up to him yet. Sometimes you have to have a leader take charge and show that he is take he is in charge. Right. And, and if he's the quarterback of this team, if he's going to be the quarterback of this team moving forward, he has to take charge. It doesn't matter if they know him or not. He has to take charge. He has to break on them. That's the only way that they're going to respect him as the leader and move forward with him. Bishop's going to get the ball back now. He's going to throw the X in the silence and a cut in the middle and run for a nice game. Great play by Bishop throwing the ball. On last down, you're going to see Bishop throw the bread in the back of the end zone over Shaq and Chad. Bread is going to make a nice catch for the touchdown, 6-0. And that's a great throw by Bishop. If you see the throw, it gets right over Shaq and Chad's head. I don't know who they were guarding. They must have been guarding each other because they sure wasn't guarding bread. Touchdown, bread. That's going to take us into halftime, 6-0. Goon squad. And I think if you look at Brett's play on the few plays he's played this season, he's contributed to this team. I right. think that he should be on the field a little bit more because it get, it adds to the team in a lot of ways. Yeah. Brett should be a player on this team and yep. not just a coach on the sideline because he adds to this team and he's productive and he, he puts up points for the team um, right now in this game. And you're going to have Reloader who's very inconsistent. They barely had enough guys to start. The guys got here late, and I put this all on Shaq. They have a very good team when they're all here, but he has to have these guys motivated. Your best player is not here for whatever personal reasons. Chad, we knew he had some things. He was working, but he's here. He's going to give you what he has. But again, unless you can turn it around and get these guys motivated to play, you're going to have a problem. And I think Bruce, who's now retired, should step up to be the coach of the team. He has a lot of knowledge. He's been in the championship with YMM, and he has a lot of experience. He's a perfect candidate to be a coach, and I think he should turn around and be the coach of the team, and Chuck should be the first general, but I think he should be the coach. Well, we shall see if, you know, because that, that's not a bad idea. It's all up to if they take in, in, into that, and it's Bruce 
ready to take the helm as the coach and take control of this team fully and Shaq stepping down and just being the captain. You're going to have second half. Now, Mr. gets here. Bishop takes himself out of the game. It was not Brett's call. I heard it was Bishop's call. Bishop sat down. Now, this team is 1-6, and the one that they got was a forfeit win to the Browns. I'm trying to get an on-field win if I'm done. Bishop is doing decent, but they sit him down for Mr., which I completely disagree with. Mr. is going to get blitzed by Ali and throw it to Butter in the middle for a big game. But Miguel's gets called for a flag for holding, which is going to bring the play back. Next down, Mr. is going to throw the receiver in the middle. It's going to be picked off by Ali, giving the ball back to this um, reloaded offense. And if you look here, L.A. was wide open. But to me, Mr. is not a good quarterback. Even though he's 6'3", he should be able to see the whole field. He makes a lot of bad passes and bad decisions. Makes one here, gives the ball back to reloading. And on that play, pretty much you see he didn't span the field at all. He was looking straight to one receiver that was yep. covered the whole way. Didn't look to the sideline, and that's what led to the interception. They cannot afford any more of this. But if Mr. plays this way, they're going to see much more of that. You're going to have Dave getting the ball, and they're going to go three and out. Dave got stopped four times. Now, I got to put a lot on Dave. You was brung here to put points up. You was brung here to take this offense to the next level. You, don't think you that the can't has get picked off twice and then and also turn over the ball. Don't give me weather. I don't want to hear that. Slippery out there. I don't want to hear it. Slippery, it's sloppery, whatever. It doesn't matter. Dave is a championship quarterback. He was brought here to put up points, and right now you're down 6 nothing to a team that's 1-6. and six. Well, right now the game is not over yet, and a championship quarterback makes up for his mistakes. And even though we have yet to see that, he has an opportunity to do that. It's all up to waiting and seeing. You're going to have Goon Squad getting the bird ball back on third down. Miss is going to throw the X in the middle. X is going to fall. It's going to be picked off by Chad, giving the ball back to reloaded. I don't put this on on Mr. X fell down. But once again, another interception on Goon Squad. What is going on? And this chalk this up into this team having everything go wrong when they don't need it to. This is another interception, another turnover that they didn't need. Unfortunately, it was nobody's fault. You know, you lose footing in the slippery snow out there, and it led to them turning over the ball. That's unfortunate. It's 6 nothing. You got to be able to make plays. I don't want to hear about the field conditions. Everybody's going through the same field condition. Third down, you're going to have Dave throw deep to Chad, who's going to beat his defender and make a great catch in the back of the end zone, tying the game up 6-6. Six, six. This is the Chad that they need. This is the monster that they need. Makes a great play here, ties the game up. Great play by Chad. But then, when you you know when you don't have an injured quarterback you know, throwing, when you have a, a, a fully you know, conditioned quarterback like Dave able to throw the ball out there to, to his receivers, you're going to start connecting more. Chad is able to open up the field more, and he's able to get the ball more. This is what happens, you know, when they transition to Dave. We probably may see more of this as they connect more. Chad is able to be Chad now that he has a stable quarterback in, in the helm. Miss is going to get the ball back, and after completing his last two passes, he's going to throw the X on the sideline, and it's going to be picked off by Shaq. Shaq, second pick of his game. Miss his third interception thrown. I think it's time to go to the bullpen because this is not working. Another interception. You, you just basically give him this game away. And right now, I'm pretty sure Bishop is like going nuts right now with the decision that he made to take himself out because when he was in, they scored. When he took himself out, three interceptions. I don't think that that was a good decision. Obviously, everybody else can agree because right now, Mr. is not helping him. He came late. He's not in, in rhythm, and he struggles as of – as you know, since he's been there anyway. So my point is, it wasn't a good decision. Bishop should have stood in the game, and they're feeling it right now. Dave on second down. He's going to throw the shock on the sideline. It's going to be incomplete. But if you look here, X is going to get flagged for hands to the face, which is a 15-yard penalty. What do you think? Uh, I think that X was trying to go for the ball. I don't think it was malicious, but if it's still hands to the face, you got to throw that flag. The refs threw the flag, and unfortunately, Goon Squad gets a penalty they didn't need. Last down, Dave on four rush. He's going to throw the Chad in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Chad is going to make a great catch while staying in bounds. 12-6, great play by the Monster. And now we're seeing Chad being able to be Chad, getting through defenses and making great plays. Dave was able to put it where, um, where um, Chad can get it and only Chad can get it. 
and now it's a great way to uh, for Chad to end the play with a great catch. That's an offense that Reloaded needs to win games. And Bishop comes back in to throw. Ding, ding, ding. I think that's a good idea. Mr. Through three interceptions. Uh, good job, Brad. Kind of late, but good job. What? I think it's a little too late for that, you know, because now Bishop is sitting on the side or, you know, running around the offense, you know, as a receiver. He's not warmed up as quarterback anymore, so he's not made, he may not even be as accurate as he was in the first half. Well, he's going to throw to the receiver for a decent gain. He's moving the ball. On third down, Bishop's going to throw the breath for a short game, picking up the first. Then Bishop is going to throw back to the receiver in the middle for a big game. And this is it. Bishop's going to throw in the middle of the end zone, but it's going to be knocked away, ending the game, giving him reloaded the win, 12-6. We load it over Goon Squad. You're going to see Shaq get pumped up. He's happy about this win. I think I got to put this one on Brent. Once again, this defense playing great. And once again, the offense lets them down. Yep. And that's been a problem all year for this team. Most of these games, they've been keeping them close. Their defense has been playing better than, than, than you expect them to. But their offense does not pick up the slack. They do not get anything done. The only six points that they scored was by Bishop quarterbacking. So things are not working out for their offense. They got to know that their offense is not going to win them any more games. I think it's a done deal for their offense. Their defense has to play harder now if they're going to have any chance of winning any more games. This defense has given up. This offense has scored 40 points in seven games. They have one win off of a forfeit. 40 points in seven games. That is terrible. That is one of the worst offenses I've seen. And the sad part about it was he went out and got a quarterback, and they still couldn't score points. This has to be on Brett. This is a bad thing by him. He had an opportunity to pick up Dave. He didn't, and his team is still struggling offense. And now his rival team is, is kind of, you know, kind of benefiting from the decision that they made to pick him up later in the season. And that's a coach's decision that he made. Unfortunately, it's a wrong one, and you got to live with it. And I'm pretty sure Brett is living with it, with it and feeling it with the loss they got today. I just did the math. 40 points in seven games. You know how much points that means you average a game? Hmm. 5.7, which is less than a touchdown a game. Ouch. How the heck? Can you average less than a touchdown a game? In a, in a passing league like this. Unbelievable. Yeah. That is atrocious. I'm bringing a word back. Put it on the screen. I don't know how to spell it, but I know how to say <laughs> A-trocious is how the offense look. Listen, there's nothing more you can say about it. They lost. Their offense is horrible. And I can't see if they, if they can do anything Atrocious. at the end of this season. Reloading moves to 5-3, and three, playing very well this season. Dave has to be more consistent offensively. They're going into the playoff run. He has to take over as a leader and take it or leave it, Reloaded. Dave has to be Dave. When these guys are not running their route, he got to say what he got to say. Because as long as Dave is holding his composure... He's going to make mistakes because he's played in this league before. He knows how to say and, and show what he means without cursing. But he needs to be Dave because as long as he's doing this, you're going to constantly see mistakes. You're going to constantly see turnovers. He has two of the best receivers in the league and Chad the Monster and Mr. Brian, Mr. Um, um, Brian Beatty, like they like to call him. He has two great offensive players. But until he learn, he has the opportunity to be Dave, we're not going to see him take the team to the next level. That being said, we're going to wrap this game up. Reloaded with the win, 12-6, over the Goon Squad. Next game up. We got Brave Hearts versus 99 Problems. Brave Hearts coming in at 3 and 2, 99 Problems coming in at 2 and 6. Now let's talk about Brave Hearts. I think Brave Hearts problem is the inability to consistently close out games. If you look at some of their losses, they lost to the Gettys 13-7. That's 7 points they lost by. Primetime, they lost 22-14. That's 8 points they lost by. 
Maniacs, 13-7. That's six points they lost by. Violators, 22-21. That's one point they lost by. And then you got the Carver game. They lost 22-6. That was 16 points they lost by. But those other four losses, they lost to a combined 21 points. That's just being inconsistent to close out games. And it matters all the way towards the end. We already know that Casey's not a person that lights up the scoreboard at quarterback. But sometimes you got to find ways to make plays, either on offense or on defense. I think the defense holds, you know, pretty much you can't expect them to do much more than what they've done. But the offense, they, they got to have guys on the, on the offensive end find, um, find ways to make plays and give a better target to KC to put up more points. Without that, they're not going to be able to close out these games. They're going to come out short just like they have. And then if you look on the other side of 99 problems, that team has a lot of problems. They are 2-6. and six. Now, they have one of the best players in the league, Joe. A guy who could be up there for defensive player of the year. A guy who could be up there for MVP. But. This team has given up. Los, their starting quarterback, has been sacked 14 times. Hmm. That is more than any other quarterback in the league. That's too many sacks. You can't win games when you're getting pressured that much. They don't have anybody to block for him. He's not the most mobile. He's a decent mobile quarterback. He can take off, but we see him panic sometimes and make some erratic throws. And the main thing about it is you, you can tell by the sack numbers that he's not able to predict where the blitzes are coming from. And that's the main thing. A lot of those sacks come from blitzes that he gets surprised come, when they come right from the line. He has to know where they're coming from and know how to counterattack. If you don't do that, then you're going to get more sacks like this um, all the way throughout the playoffs. I'm going to give you his numbers right now. Bear with me. I'm going to give you the numbers for Los. And we're going to see what's his numbers quarterbacking-wise because if you already been sacked 14 times. So if you were sacked 14 times, that means your interceptions are it's seven. So that's pretty high for interceptions, but it's not terrible. And the next guy on the total, you have Heckle. Is that the name? Heck, yes. Heck, he's been sacked six times. So if you put the six with the 14, that gives you 20. 20 sacks by both quarterbacks combined, and you have nine interceptions. That's a lot. Yeah, and it, it, it just shows that on a lot of plays, they get pressured by the blitz, and they're not able to counterattack on that. They're not able to either pick it up or read it and be able to find an open receiver. When they don't do that, that's why they have such high score, um, high sack numbers, and it affects the way the um, balls are thrown, and it can lead to interceptions. Well, we're going to jump on the game. Um, 99 problems do not have low start in this game. He's not here. They got Goldo. Goldo used to play with Raw last season. They got him throwing today, so we're going to have to see how he does. Casey gets the start. Casey on second down. He's going to throw the Macho for a big game, picking up the first down. On four rush, the next play, Casey's going to get rid of the ball, but it's going to be picked off by Goldo, giving the ball back to Prime, um, Braveheart. And that's the problem with Casey. He's not a downfield home run hitter, but he has to be able to understand the situation. And throwing a pick here is not a good idea, especially when you just got the first down. And again, that's, that, that's Casey. Sometimes he makes mistakes this way and it leads to turnovers. That's not something that the Bravehearts need Going into this game, Casey has to fix that and um, going into the next drive, not make a mistake like that because they're not going to win that way. Goldo's going to get sacked by Heck on this next possession. Then two plays later, Goldo's going to throw short to Junior, who's going to make a nice gain and get the first down. Joe, um, Goldo's going to throw the pass to Joe in the back of the end zone for the touchdown, 6 nothing. And the guy who I think could be the best player in this league gets on the scoreboard. And this is why Joe has to be the guy to go to throughout the season. He's been, you know, he's been quiet the last couple games for them, but he has to be a guy to step up for this team because without his presence on the field, making plays and scoring points for this team, the, the 99 problems have little chance of getting anything done in these games going into the playoffs. Casey gets the ball back. He's going to throw to Chris in the middle for a decent game, picking up the first down. Then Casey's going to throw to Dre in the middle. It's going to be almost picked off by Joe. 
Casey follows that over the pass to Dre again in the middle of the end zone. It's going to be dropped, turnover on downs, giving the ball back to 99 problems. And Dre has to make this catch. That's a decent throw by Casey. Gets in the ball. He drops the ball, turns it over. And there's another turnover that they didn't need. Unfortunately for them, now it's their receivers dropping the ball. First it was Casey making mistakes. Now it's their receivers dropping the ball. This offense has to get it together because now they're behind in this game. If they keep making mistakes like this, this may be another loss for them that they don't need. Goldo's going to throw a pass to Javon in the middle for a decent game. Then Goldo's going to get blitzed and sacked by Buddy, forcing him to punt. Great play by Buddy. I really criticize this offense, this defense, because we saw their middle play lights out in the beginning of the, game of the season. They kind of fell back, but now they look like they're being more consistent within the last few weeks. Buddy here with a great sack, forcing 99 problems to punt. He was like a freight train running into, um, running towards the quarterback. There was no way to stop him once he came in. That's a good sack by Buddy. Braveheart's going to get the ball back, but they're not able to do nothing. They punt back, giving the ball back to 99 problems. Goldo's going to throw to number 80 on the sideline for a short game. Then Goldo's going to throw to Junior in the gap. Junior's going to make a nice catch for a decent game. Goldo then is going to get blitzed by Steve and sacked by Steve. Great play by Steve. Like I said, I talked about him and I talked about Buddy in the middle. This time it seemed like they took that personal and they being more consistent. Great blitz and sack by Steve. So in the very next play, Goldo's going to throw it up and it's going to be picked off by Steve. Give him the ball. Back to 99 problems, taking us, I'm sorry, to Braveheart's taking us into the half. 6 0. 99 is up, but Braveheart's defense is playing good. Great play by Steve to get the interception right after the sack. And this is what their defense does. They may not uh, make noise a lot like, like other teams, but they play and keep games close. And this is what they're doing in this game. They're preventing 99 from getting and making anything else happen besides the points that they put up. And that's the way to keep your team in the game. Then after the second half, Second down, Goldo's going to throw to Javon in the middle for a nice game. Then after getting the first down, Goldo's going to throw to Heck on the side, um, throw it to Heck for a few yards. Goldo's then going to throw it to Joe in the end zone, but it's going to be picked off by Steve, giving the ball back to Braveheart. Steve's second pick of the game. This is the Steve that I saw in the beginning of the season. This is the very, the very man who can shut down this middle, making great plays here. And obviously, you see his play turned up in this game. Steve is tired of losing. Steve is tired of the close games. He wants to make something happen for his team. This may be something that fires the team up. He has a sack and two interceptions all within a, a few plays of each other. That's impressive play by Steve leading this team, doing whatever he can to get this team back on, on back in this game. Unfortunately, Braveheart can't move the ball and they go four now, giving the ball back to Goldo. Goldo's going to move the ball in three plays to get to the 10-yard line. Then on last down, Goldo's going to throw it up in the end zone. It's going to be incomplete, turnover and downs. Giving the ball back to Braveheart. Casey's going to get the ball. Second down, he's going to throw to Chris for a short game. Then Casey's going to throw to Macho in the middle for a nice game. Casey's going to be able to pick up the first hit, throwing to Dre in the middle for the first down. Great play by Dre with a big game. Casey then is going to get blitzed and sacked right here. But that's not going to stall him because on the next play, he's going to throw downfield to Hector, who is going to be wide open in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. With the extra point, it's going to put them up 7-6. Great throw by KC, finding this man wide open. And that's the way to connect with your receiver. He actually sees Hector standing there wide open. And why not throw it to him if the defense doesn't see him? You see him, you throw it to him. That's a, uh, that's a good way for Hector for contributing on the offensive end to put up points for this um, Bravehearts team. They much needed it, and that's a great way to put points on the board. Goldo's going to throw short to Joe on the sideline. Joe's going to cut left, make a great move, nice spin, and break free for the, the long game. And he's running it down to the house. And if you look at here, number 19A chases him down on a play that a lot of guys would have gave up on. Chasing him down, preventing a touchdown, putting him in the red zone. That is a great play by A to chase down Joe, who a lot of other players would have just gave up for the touchdown. And that's a way to give, not give up on a play. Even if you give up a good play, but if you stop the touchdown, sometimes you give your defense a chance to recover and cause a turnover, even though they're in the red zone, that's a good way to keep at the play and not give up on it. And I think that that was big for the Bravehearts. Goldo's going to throw the receiver at the five yard line. That play is going to be dropped. Then Goldo's going to get blitzed and he's going to get sacked right here. Big sack right here on Goldo. On the last play, Goldo's going to throw it up in the end zone. It's going to be in this in incomplete pass, giving Bravehearts to win. 7 6. 
Big win by Bravehearts, beating 99 Problems to move the 4-5. and five. And that is the way you play defense. No matter if you give up a big play, you don't give up on it. Yeah, they, they, the defender chased them all the way down to near the, um, the 10-yard line and stops that touchdown. That was the key play to keep Bravehearts ahead in this game because if not, I think that would have been another loss for the Bravehearts. That's the way for the defense to pick up. Even though they give up a lot of yards, that's the way to win the game. And 99 problems, once again, can't make plays. 2-7, seven, and seven, a game that they should have won. And, I mean, I just feel bad for a few of the plays. You got um, Junior, you got Joe both going to the All-Star game. And it's can, inconsistency at the quarterback in Helm, like I said. Too many sacks, too many mistakes, and that's going to cost them this game right here. But I'm going to say this. As a, as a quarterback that's taking, you know, taking up the slack for the starting quarterback, Goldo didn't necessarily do that great, but he did better than you know, than you would expect. He was able to move the ball. Unfortunately, they were not able to score on a lot of those drives. Oh, I get it. The whole six points he scored. Yeah. That, no, that's, listen that's to what I said. Good. Listen six to points. what I said. That's a lot. Listen to what I said. That's six points more than I had. All right. Well, yeah, because yeah. you can't throw. Right. So my point is, you wouldn't have done any better job anyway. So my point is, Goldo was able to move down the field, but their receivers were not able to make plays happen. They were dropping a lot of plays, a lot of passes in this game. So you can't always put it on the quarterback. Their whole offense has to step up. Joe had a decent game today, but that wasn't enough for them to get this win. Everybody else has to step up and be a contributor for this team if they're going to end up winning any more games. 7-6, Brave Foss with the win. They got to play a little more consistent, consistently, but they got to win. They close out a game, which has been a problem all season. They win a close game. And right now, if they would have won a lot of them over close games, God only knows where these guys would have been. But you got to see that. You got to say that this defense has been playing impressive this year. Oh, Keeping yeah. a lot of these games close. And it's a defense that a lot of people have to pay, you know, a lot of teams have to pay attention to. They're not a sleepover defense, a sleep a team to sleep on because they do play hard yes. and they do cause turnovers no matter what team they play against. If Casey can limit his mistakes and run that clock out, take the short passes, intermediate passes, move the ball, have not, don't make too many mistakes, allow your defense to help you, this team can be dangerous in the playoffs. I wouldn't want to play them because they have a good style. Steve is very much a very good middleman. I think he should be in the All-Star game. We're going to have to see how that works out. And this team is, is playing with a chip on their shoulder because they feel disrespected on their record. So we're going to have to see where that ends them up. Um, we're going to go to our next break. Brave Hearts with the win, 7-6 over 99 problems. Next game up, you're going to see Violators and Dem Geddes. Violators coming in with a record of 4-4. Four while them getters are coming in with a record of five and two. Now these teams go back, they got a little history. Two seasons ago, them getters ended violated season in the playoffs to get to the final four. So they got a little bit of history. They've played, they've had some good games, good rivalry games. So this is gonna be an exciting game to see them to battle each other today. Well, the thing is the the, the season afterwards, we saw them getters step downward. They yeah. they they step back. Um, last season because they didn't have a lot of their guys playing for them. Um, sp speaking of speaking pretty much of Megatron, Walk missed a lot of games last year as well. So they didn't look like the same team as that year that they went to the conf to the Western Conference Finals. So right now we got to see if they are the team that they that beat the Violators that year. If they can play that way and get another win against this team. Well, we're gonna jump into the game right now. You're gonna have Violators getting the ball first. Fred is going to throw the flow for a short game. Then he's going to follow it up with a deep pass to Yomi, which is going to be picked off by Rubio, giving the ball back to them getters. And this is a pass that Fred has to make. If you're going to take the shot, make sure it's a good shot. This one ain't, and it's picked off. And this is – Fred hasn't been having the best season this year. Um, obviously, it, it could be that he's still hurt. We don't know what the reason is. But on that play, he did not connect with his receiver. He did not make the best throw that he could and it led to a turnover early in the game for the Violators. You're gonna have Geddes getting the ball. Walk is not here, so Martinez gets the start. Martinez is gonna throw to Hollywood in the middle for a nice game. Then Martinez is gonna get blitzed by Macho, but throw the Cess on the sideline for a first down. Martinez throws the Cess again on the sideline, but it's gonna be almost picked off by Yomi. Then on third down, Martinez rolls to the right, 
goes to Hollywood in front of the end zone. It's going to be dropped, but caught by Rubio for the touchdown. 6 nothing. Get us with the lead. Listen, however you can get it, you take it. 6 nothing. And that's the way to stay aware of the ball. You know, it's still in the air. Rubio's still able to make a play on it. Even though Hollywood's um, dropped the pass, he's able to pick up, pick up his teammate and score the points. It's still a touchdown at the end of the day. You're going to have Violators getting the ball back. On first down, Fred is going to throw to Ed, who's wide open on the sideline. He's going to run it, but then pitch a pass to Nomar, who's going to run it all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. Tying the game, 6-6. Violators are back in it. Ed is an all-star. He's played well this season. I think he should get the touchdown on this one. Yeah, but I guess he's not being selfish. You know, he wants to have Nomar in the game. And obviously, he saw Nomar had a gap to run. So that was a smart pitch where Nomar was able to run into the end zone. That's unselfish play. That's smart play by Ed. And that's why players like this make the All-Star game, not only for their numbers, but for their smart play on the field. And that's why Ed is on that list. Martinez is going to throw short to Hollywood for a few yards. Then after getting the first down, Martinez is going to throw to Hollywood again in the gap. On last time, Martinez is going to find Los in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Los is going to get the extra point, putting them up 14-6. Great play by Martinez, finding Los. Fred is going to get the ball back. He's going to throw the first down to Yomi in the middle for a decent game. Then he's going to follow up with a pass to Macho in the middle for a decent game. Third down, Fred is going to throw the flow in the middle, get him a short game. Last down, Fred is going to hand the ball up to Ty. Rudio is going to miss the tag. Ty is going to run it. From the five-yard line, in the end zone, for the touchdown. No more gets a two-point conversion, which ties the game 14-14. Great play by Ty. This is a gutsy call to hand off the ball and take a shot trying to run it in. And that was late in the drive, too. I think it was either third or fourth down. You never know. You never see a team take a chance running the ball that late in a drive. And they take a chance. They had some confidence in Ty. Ty's able to um, create space for himself. He's able to dodge a tag and run it in for the end zone. I think that was a good decision. And they put them right back in this game. Martinez on the last play of the game, he's going to throw it up in the end zone. It's going to be picked off by Ed, taking this into the half, 14-14. And these teams are both, like I said, it's a big battle. These teams kind of familiar with each other. They're making plays, both teams, but I like the way that the getters are moving the ball around with Martinez at quarterback. I like the way that they're moving it without their starter, and they're still scoring points. But the Violators are not backing down. They need this win. It is a very important win because they're still battling in the standings to keep that third spot, so they need this win right now. They need to come ahead, and right now they're fighting for this win, not only because they want to beat the get them getters, but they want to keep themselves in a proper position in the season. Steve comes in the throw for them getters. Didn't understand that. Hollywood's a coach. He's a captain. He's the man on the scene. But unless Martinez's arm was falling off, I thought the game was tied. But yeah. that's why I'm here, and I guess Hollywood's a coach. <laughs> Steve's going to throw deep to Manny for a huge gain in the first down. After three plays on fourth down, Steve's going to scramble right and throw across the field. Two Rubio's going to make a catch. For the touchdown, putting them up 20 to 14. And was putting Steve in the game a good decision? No. Puts up points in the, in the game. It's, they didn't slow down, so I can't necessarily say that it hurt them. At the end of the day, Steve was able to put up points in the first drive he's in this game. So it could have been a good decision. We'll just have to see towards the end of the okay, game. Okay, I'm wrong. That usually never happens. Already I know that Stephen J <laughs> is A OK -okay and always writing. Like that. That's not right. No. Because you're wrong here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got it. <laughs> you're gonna have first down. Fred is gonna throw half time and throw to Yomi in the middle for a nice game, picking up the second additional first down. Then Fred is gonna throw short to Nomar with nice block and running all the way to the the five yard line. Then Fred is gonna follow up with a pass to Nomar in the front of the end zone for the touchdown. Great play by Nomar. He has stepped it up. Me and him has gone back and forth about him being inconsistent this season, him not protecting our all-star appearance that he made last year. And this game, he stepped it up. He has a big touchdown here, his second in the game. First one was an assist, but he'll take it, and that gives them the 2020 tie. And it's not necessarily all about an all-star run, protecting your, your spot in the all-star game. None of that should matter. You want to contribute for your team, and that should matter most. 
He's doing it now. This is something that they needed to see from uh, from No More throughout the season. Hopefully, they see that through, um, going towards the end of the season throughout the playoffs. But that's good play from No More so far. Getters get the ball back. Remember, it's 20 20. They drive down the field in three plays to get to the 15 yard line. Steve is going to get blitzed by Yomi and throw a pass. Two Rubio is going to dodge it and run it in for the touchdown. 26 20. Great play by them Getters. They take the lead. And right now, not only has Steve been a good decision, it seems like both quarterbacks are on at this point and the Violets have no defense to stop them, but their players are stepping up. Rubio is playing big. He has a second touchdown of the day. They're playing big for, the, um, for their team. They want to come ahead with this win, and it pretty much looks like a battle all the way to the end. Fred is going to get the ball back. He's going to run for a decent game. Fred on third down is going to run again for a decent game. You're going to see him run near the 10-yard line. Then Fred is going to find Yomi in the middle of the end zone for the touchdown. 26-26. We have a shootout. Call the cops. They're shooting out over here. And right now, right now what you're seeing, not only is there a shootout, but there's a reason why there's a shootout. There is no defense in this game. <laughs> I haven't seen any defense talk from the beginning of the game all the way to the end. This is just an offensive shootout. And if you notice that there's guys missing on both sides of the field for both teams, if Megatron was on in this game, you probably would have seen a different game for them getters. Yeah. If you would have seen Herbie and, and, and Dre on the team for um, Violets, we probably would see a different game here. None of these guys are on the field, and probably that's why we've seen a shootout back in. It's 26-26. Who doesn't like this type of game? A guy we who want, likes defense, that's who. We want to see scoring, scoring, scoring. But defense wins championships, and without a defense, you're putting your team in a harder position to win the game. And that's why defense has to step up, step up for both teams. Second down, you're gonna have Steven with the ball. Now he's gonna throw deep success. Who's gonna be wide open? He's gonna drop the ball. Last down, Steve's gonna throw the receiver, but it's gonna be stopped, short of the end zone, turnover on downs. That takes us into overtime. Now the way the overtime rules go, whoever gets the ball first, they get a chance to score. If they don't score, if, or if they do score regardless, the second team gets a shot to score. If that team, let's say the first team, you went first, you don't score. My turn. I don't score. I get the ball back in sudden death. So I go twice. And then if I don't score, then you get a shot to try to score to end the game. Hopefully all of y'all got it. If you don't, rewind it and hear it again because I'm not repeating <laughs> it. You're going to have Fred getting the ball back first. Violators. Fred is going to throw the macho for a short game. Then on third down, you're going to have Fred with time throw the Ed for a nice game. On fourth down. Fred is going to throw the macho in the middle of the end zone. It's going to be dropped and turned over on downs. This is the macho that we know. Macho has been having a great season, an MVP season, but we haven't seen him do anything this game. He has not played like an MVP this game, and we had a chance to help his team get a lead. He drops the ball. It seems like reality is starting to set in, and this mega universal is where Macho is catching everything, destroying the lead. It's starting to become reality now. He makes a big drop here. That could have gave him a lead. And this is the worst time to start dropping passes. He's been catching passes all the way from week four and surprising everybody in the league because he's known as a defensive guy. But when you have a touchdown pass thrown right to you, there's no excuse. It doesn't matter who you are. You're supposed to catch that pass. He doesn't hear, and that may come back to bite him um, when, the, when the getters come back on the field. Stevie's going to get the ball back for Geddes. He's going to throw the sets for a short game. Seems like he liked that guy. Follow up, he's going to throw the lows on the sideline, but it's going to be picked off by Yomi, giving the ball back to Vales. Great play by Yomi. He's been playing like an all-star, but also all-star defensively. Great play by Yomi here. And he like, like, we, we, like we say, when you are a key player for your team, you're going to do whatever you have to. You're going to take whatever position you have to on your team to make plays for your team. And if Yomi's been doing that, throughout the year as quarterback, as defensive back, as linebacker, as receiver, whatever he had to, he's been contributing, and that's why he's been having such a great season so far. Now we're in sudden death, but like I said, get his goal first now, because Vale's went first the first time, now the sudden death, get his goal first. If get his score, game is over. Steve's gonna throw the receiver who's gonna get hit by Yomi, causing an incomplete pass. That is a great hit by Yomi. The guy went up, and unfortunately, somebody walked in the way, but you can see the impact as the guy hits the ground. Great hit by Yomi, breaking the pass up. Stevie's then going to throw to the receiver on the sideline for a big game. Stevie's going to throw the ball up. Ed is going to make contact early, and it's going to be a flag. 
The question is, do you think Ed got there early? I think he got there a little bit early because you could see he put his hands on the receiver and the, the distance of the play may be a little bit far, but you see that Ed puts, his, puts contact on the receiver right before he's able to get any chance of catching the ball. That's not good play on defense. At least it looks like he came, you know, he read the play too early and reacted too early. And unfortunately for them, it leads to a flag uh, um, that gets the getters in great field position. Last down on the five yard line, Steve's gonna scramble. He's gonna throw to Hollywood in the front of the end zone, but it's gonna be broken up by Macho, turning the ball over. Great play by the defensive MVP, the defense, I'm sorry, the league MVP candidate, Macho, with a great play here. And this is one thing that you see um, Macho doing. This is one thing you know that he's good at. Defense, breaking up plays, you know, being a key player on their defense. He does it here. He, he makes up for the touchdown pass that he dropped, and he gives his offense a chance to seal the win for them. Fred has an opportunity to end this game right now. Fred is going to throw the Macho on the sideline for a decent game. Fred is going to come back to Macho again on the sideline. This time it's going to be dropped. Macho's second big drop of the day. Mm. Then it's going to bring us all the way to fourth down. Fred is going to throw it up in the end zone. It's going to be knocked away. End of the game, 26-26, tie. And why do we, okay, why do we start seeing defense in overtime? Why do we see this defense on both teams towards in the middle of the game? This probably would have been a different outcome for either team if they would have stepped up and played defense in the middle of the game and not in overtime. Now they both leave the field with a tie, something that both teams don't really need at this point. It may not hurt the getters as much as it hurts the violators, but you don't want to walk a walk off this field for, with, a, with a tie because pretty much all your efforts that you played on the field were pretty much for nothing. You didn't gain anything. Well, getters are going to go to 5-2-1 two, and one, while violators go to 4-4-1. Four, four, and, and what that can say about the violators is they won four in a row. So now this win, this is a tie, you know, but, you know, it's crazy because this could have been a big win for them. Yes, a huge win. And I could have turned around the standings for them, but now they pretty much stay the same, which getters are ahead of them. And I don't think they're going to be able to catch them now that they tied with getters rather than beat them. I mean, at the end of the day, the getters are, are in a position. to they, They're going to stay where they are. They're fine. Even though, like I said, the, the tie doesn't hurt them, but they would have preferred to win. The violators, even though they tied, they could have used to win. But I think they're in a good position right now because they already broke. They already got the tiebreak against the Bravehearts who are right behind them. Right. So I don't think the get um the um, the, the Bravehearts are going to be able to catch up with the Violets at this point. They needed the Violets to lose. Right. And the Violets did not lose. So at the end of the day, they're going to stay in the same stand as for now. They're going to be where they are in third place. They have a chance because the Violets got Carver coming in. I'm sorry, the Violets got YMM coming in. Why um. Brave Hearts have um, Riot Squad coming in. So that that can switch around. That can switch around. The only way it's going to switch around is if Violators lose and the Brave Hearts win. Right. That's probably the only way you're going to see any standing changes because, again, the Violators have the advantage because they have the tiebreaker. Right. So it's all up to what happens next week. We're going to have to see what happens. Violators and Getters with the tie, 26-26. Both teams walk away the way that they came in with the very same record, just adding a tie. We'll be right back. Real Tough Talk. Next game up, you have Riot Squad versus the U. The U is coming in 6-2 and two, as Riot Squad is coming in 5-3. and three. Now, the thing I think is the problem with the U, inconsistency at quarterback. We see them try to bring back Kev to try to throw. That was short-lived. Then they went with J.J., who... Seems like he can be the future of the U, but the thing about Swiss is he's like the Yankees. He's trying to win now. He's not trying to develop for the future. So I think you're going to see games where Swiss comes in and throws. JJ gets a start, but Swiss is going to come in and throw certain plays if the U wants to win the championship, especially in this league. And I'm going to say this. If they want to win now, I think having JJ start at the helm is not a good idea. Nothing against nothing against JJ, but JJ is still growing as a quarterback. Right. I can't say that he's gonna hit his ceiling anytime soon, but he's not at the level where he's gonna be winning your team championships. Not yet. So there's a lot of growing pains with that. Can they afford that moving towards the end of the season? I don't think so because JJ struggled in the games that he did start. 
So I think that Swiss has to take over for now if he really wants to win right now. And then you got Riot Squad, a team that's up and down. They're five and three. They had a big, a nice game versus Carl where they lost by seven. But then they lose to the Maniacs. Then they get blown out by primetime. So I think it was 26 to six, something like that. So this team is up and down, and it's been inconsistency from their offense. They have a decent defense, but I think their defense has stepped back since Ott got hurt. And they haven't played with the same aggressiveness that we've seen them in the beginning of the season. We've seen JP step his game up. He made the all-star team. Um, they got a few other nice players, but they just seem to be missing something. Mm. Well, we're going to jump right into the game. You're going to have Swiss getting the start. Swiss is going to throw to Brandon in the middle in the gap for a nice game for first down. Then on second down, Swiss is going to throw to JJ in the middle for a short game. Swiss is then going to get blitzed by Ock, but find Brandon wide open in the end zone for the touchdown. Brandon also gets the extra point, 7-0. And exactly what you talked about about that secondary, they give up a play. When they brought the pressure by Ock, they still gave up the touchdown to Brandon. And the thing about it is when you're having a guy blitz in, your defense has to shift. Your, right. your, your, um, your secondary has to shift to pick up the extra receiver that's open. So if they don't do that, they don't communicate knowing that they're blitzing, and there's a guy being nobody here. And because of that, since he's being nobody, the man that he's supposed to be being is wide open for the touchdown. Right. And I think that type of communication lapse is what's going to hurt them, and it's been hurting them in these last couple of games. Right. gets the ball back. They can't move the ball in three plays. They end up punting the ball. You're going to have the you getting the ball back now. Swiss is going to run for a nice gain in the first down. Then Swiss is going to get blocking from Berger and throw deep to Shannon, who has a step on rail. He's going to get caught in the end zone for the touchdown, 14 zip. And if you look here, Berger is the key of this play. He's giving Swiss time, and it frustrates this right attack. Great play by Berger with the blocks. Well, we haven't seen anybody be able to block Smoke throughout the season. Smoke has been getting through pretty much everybody who's pretty much lined up in front of him. When they play Carver and Ricky blocked Smoke, Smoke didn't touch Chuck. That is the true. issue with it is... Smoke cannot beat bigger blockers. We've seen him get through it in the All-Star game when he got blocked by um, um, B-Dot. B-Dot. But he got shut down. When you put a bigger yeah. blocker on than Smoke, his speed is neutralized. But I've seen this season Smoke get through bigger guys. The thing about it is and the difference between them and Ricky and Butter. He did Butter. get past Ricky, though. Listen, that's what I'm get... saying. But the thing about it is positioning counts. It's not only size, but positioning. Ricky's good with the positioning, and Berger is in the position to block Smoke. Smoke does not have any lanes to go, and that's why he's effectively able to block Smoke. Smoke is fast, he's able to slip by, but with Berger blocking, he's not able to do that in this play, and that, that leads to that touchdown. Rudy's gonna get the ball back for this right offense, and he's gonna throw the tone in the middle for a decent game. Then Rudy's gonna go downfield the pig, which is drop. We've seen Pig drop some passes this year. It's another big drop. They're gonna end up having a punt. Pig has to make these plays. He, he, he has to make them if he wants to be accepted as a real offensive player. And at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter about being accepted as an offensive player. Do you, if you want to win, when you're in a position to make a play, you got to make it. That That's no ifs, ands, buts. You got to make plays like this. They don't, and it leads to a turnover. So this is going to get the ball back. Remember, it's 14 zip. He's going to get blitzed by Akin. Throw short to JJ, who's going to pitch it back to Swiss for a decent game. The U is dangerous with this. They do this all day. Them and Carver both do these pitch plays. After getting the first down, Swiss is going to throw deep to Brandon, who has a step on the defender, and it's going to be dropped. Swiss is going to get blitzed by Pitt. Swiss is going to pitch the ball to Akon here. Rudy misses the tag. Akon is going to throw the ball downfield to Shannon, who has a step on KC and makes the big catch for the big game, but it's neutralized because the dude gets caught for holding here. Great call by the ref. Then on the last play before half, Swiss is going to pitch it to JJ, who's going to throw it deep to the end zone, going to be picked off by Kobe, taking this into the half, 14 zip. And I think that play could have made a big difference in yeah. the game, and it was taken back from the U. The U could have took over this game by this point. That flag hurts, and it keeps Riot Squad in this game. Riot Squad has to answer, though, if they want to keep competing in this game. If not, the U is pretty much going to pick up where they left off and run away with this game. And these are the teams that Riot wanted. 
They wanted to be respected. They wanted to show what they can do. They, they lost a close game to Carver. They lost to Maniacs, a game that they should have won. And now they're up against the U, and they really got to show what they have. But it's inconsistency again on offense. On their quarterback, 14-0 right now. They can't put up points. You're going to have Rudy getting the ball now. Rudy's going to, on four rush, he's going to dodge a tag and throw the speed. He's going to run for a nice gain in the first down. Then Rudy's going to get blitzed by Swiss. Throw deep to JP. Passes to passes two defenders for the touchdown. JP getting more involved in the passing game. He's been involved, but he hasn't really found the end zone. He finds the end zone here. Great play by JP. They're back in the game 14-6. And finally, Ruby, Rudy's able to throw him the ball. For some reason, there was a lot of plays this season where Rudy would overlook JP and force plays downfield to Smikes. I feel like it, like he traded one receiver for another. He finally throws it to JP. And a, an impressive roll, um, throw at that. Get him in between two defenders for the nice touchdown to JP. 14-6. Swiss is going to get the ball on four rush. He's going to get rushed by Smoke, who beats Berg on this play. Swiss is going to step over the line of scrimmage. Lost it down. Great play by Smoke with the pressure. On last down on four rush, we're blocking from Berger. Swiss is going to run for first down. The question is, was Berger holding on this play? And it's hard to say because... Whatever whatever holding that was, was seen by the team, whatever they saw, it was too brief for the, for the refs to see it, and that's just a good block by Berger. So this is going to get blitzed by Ott and throw a pass downfield. It's going to be picked off by KC. Definitely great play with the pressure on Swiss. Swiss makes a bad throw, picked off, giving the ball back to right squad. Well, unfortunately, that play was kind of broken up when it was filmed, right. but we already know what happened. KC was able to step into that play and um, gets the pick um, right when Riot Squad needs it. Right. That was a key play for them. Hopefully they can capitalize. It looked like we saw that the camera person slipped on the snow mm -hmm. and it caused them to um, stop um, the, the recording. As y'all all know, it was a terrible day. The snow yes. was starting to break up. It was real slushy out there. Riot goes three and out and they can't move the ball. They give it back to the youth. After two short passes, Swiss rolls to the right, throws to Gaka, and it's dropped and picked off by Rudy. Great play by Rudy. I hate calling him Gaka. His name is Jesse, but everybody knows him as Gaka, but he still drops the ball. He wants to be taken as a serious offensive player. You got to catch him. Well, Kaka to me is a defensive player. Right. Sometimes you, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I think that he should stay on defense. Um, on offense, he comes unfortunate. He's not able to prove himself on this play. He drops a pass and at least an interception by Rice Squad. Rudy's going to throw a short pass to Tone for a few yards. Then Rudy's going to come back to Tone in the middle. But Gaka's going to show what he really does, and he's going to have a nice hit to break up the play. That is a nice hit. This is what Gaka does. And like I just said, he needs to stick to defense because he does it pretty well. When he's, on, when he's in the right frame of mind, he's able to put a great hit to break up this play. That's the physical defense that Kaka is known for, and he makes a big play for his team. Here. Last down with a few yards from the first. Rudy's going to throw deep to Pig with the defender on incomplete pass turnover on downs this is last down you need a first down but you throw a bomb yeah Rudy that 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 was a good one to pig JP and tone is your better offensive players than pig nothing no disrespect to pig but JP and tone is better offensive players than him. but you go to pig downfield yeah that's why your offense is struggling. And the thing about it is because your offense is struggling, you can take whatever the defense gives you. They were only a few yards away from Run them. for it. Yes. I mean, I don't know if he was scared to run. The point is, I'm pretty sure they would have been able to get five yards on that play if they would have had a, a quick dump off play. Rudy was looking towards pick downfield all the, the whole time, and that's what led to them um, with this incomplete pass and forcing the turnover. 14 to 6 right now. Swiss is gonna get the ball. He's gonna get blitzed by Pig. With nice block, and Swiss is gonna throw to JJ in the middle. He's gonna run all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. 20 to 6. Now that you were starting to take that little running lead. And that's because Riot Squad were not able to capitalize on offense. The um the the use offense able to recover and they're able to put points on the board. They're running away with this game right now. Rudy's gonna get the ball back. He's gonna get blitzed by Swiss and go downfield to Casey, who's wide open in the end zone. For the touchdown, 20 to 12, now they're making their run back. Great play by Rudy going downfield this time, finding his guy. And right when they needed to, uh, it seems like Rudy was not um, scared to go downfield after the turnover in the, last, in the last drive. He's able to find KC. Finally, 
somebody stepping up and giving him a target downfield, and he's able to put a point and keep them alive in this game. Swiss with nice blocking is going to run for a short gain in the first down. Then Swiss is going to throw to Brandon on the sideline for a nice game. Swiss is going to get blitzed by Pig and sacked by Smoke. Great play by Smoke. Give him a smoke. Sack number 13. And he's two sacks away from breaking the record. Yeah. One to tie, two to break it from the former defensive player of the year, Milo, who plays with General's 14 sack record. And this is a strategy that the Rise Squad team needs to run a little bit more. Pig with the, the with the blitz that, that frees up smokes with some with some space to run in and clean up and get the sack on the quarterback. That's a play that's been working for them all season, and they need to run that as much as possible to keep the quarterback on their toes and make some defensive plays. So this is going to throw to Shannon in the middle for a nice game, but he's going to get stopped short of the end zone, turning the ball over on downs. Remember, it's a few seconds up the clock is running, 20 to 12. Rudy's going to throw the case in the middle for a nice game, but he can't move the ball any further than that. They're going to end up getting stopped, end of the game, 20 to 12, the U with the win. And this was the U, you know, playing their game, you know, not falling apart too much. Swiss is able to um, score more points than JJ has, you know, in the past couple games JJ started. I think that Swiss just needs to take the helm and finish off the season as quarterback. That's the, their, their offense looks better while he's at the quarterback and helm. And this is the way to go for this team because their defense has been, you know, playing decent. This is the, the you that you're used to watching, um, you know, win games. This is the way that they need to go towards the rest of the season. And Riot got to turn it around. I mean, they're five and four. They lost some games that they could have won. I mean, they they got they got brave hearts coming in town, so they can end the season six and four, which would be a great season for them. The two teams that they wanted to play, they lost by a touchdown too. So that's something to hang your hat. Well, you got to add prime time, which they got blown well, out yeah, by. Yeah. So you can't well, forget that game. Yeah, that's true. They wanted the U. They lost by seven. They won at Carver. They lost by seven. They won in prime time. I think they lost by twenty. Yes. So I mean, not to to to, to you know attack them too much. Prime time pretty much has one of the best offenses in the league right, right now. So this hasn't been any team that has slowed them down towards the end. Of, towards well, we're gonna have to see season. what happened with the Carver game. But that's why I said yet. Right. That being said, great win by the U. They moved to seven and two. Seven and two. That's pretty good. The only team they lost to was IOD and YMM. Unfortunately, those are the two top seeds in their division. Yeah. Well, in the conference, I should say. Mm -hmm. But they'll take the seven and two record first time in the church lead. The U makes noise and they make playing well. Right squad, five and four, coming into the last game of the season. They could turn it around. They could keep the winning going. We have to see what happens. We're going to be right back. Real tough talk. The U with the big win, 20 to 12.